Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly vodcast where we cover all things with the future upcoming third person MOBAs that are out there. That includes all the para zombies and ethereal. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about all the updates for Overprime, Ethereal, Fault, and Pred. Then we'll get into the popularity poll. And then our topic for discussion is the pros and cons of ELO and possible replacements for that system. If we can think of some, if you guys can think of some while we're talking right here, go ahead. Um, I'm your host, the Mangoose. I do extend the opportunity to anyone who wants to come host, to come guest host, just hit me up. You don't have to be a streamer. You don't even have to have a webcam. Just hit me up and we, we will pull you in as long as you have Discord. That's kind of the one thing. You got to have the Discord. <laughs> but my co-host, as always, is the one and only Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm fantastic, Mangoose. Happy to be here, man. And with us, we've got Blood Hunter joining us this week. Blood, go ahead and give us a brief overview of like how you got involved with Paragon and these projects as a whole. All right. Well, hello, Mongoose and Jelly. But uh, I started in Paragon on PS4. I saw their trailer one time on E3 when I used to watch the when they used to have an E3 expo. And I was like, this game looks interesting. I was kind of used to Call of Duty and crap like that. But uh, this game, it just, it I don't know, it just did something to me. <laughs> it made me, like, I have to play this game. And then I immediately, I think they announced it that day that they were going to do uh, paid access after they showed that. And I was just like, I'm on, I'm getting it. But I had no clue how to play a MOBA, no clue how to do anything. So it's been a rough kind of a... Uh, all through Paragon, it was always like, go stand over there in that lane. <laughs> no one would really give me any examples. They're like, go over there. I was like, well, I like this little anime girl, Shimbi, when she came out. I was like, I'm going to play her in the off lane. Fine. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> she was good but off yeah, lane. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. But after a while, I actually got a... Uh, Paragon died when they first announced Paragon died because I used to watch Another Notch. As soon as it died, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to play it. I guess I'm going to find something else to do. I tried Smite and I didn't like it. I didn't. I didn't. I really don't like top-down games, so I never tried League or anything. But I did when uh, I did hear about a Paragon demo that came out. I tried to get into, which I guess it was one person. I forgot uh, who was that. That was Rocket, Rocket Mania. Mania. I think he was. Met, yeah. yeah. And then he turned that into like something else. I didn't do, and then it was Overthrow. And then when Overprime, when they released the Overprime demo for people to download, that's when I was like, I'm downloading this. I don't care if it messes up my PC, I'm going to download it. But I had fun on that. I started getting pretty good at Rampage on there. I finally, that gave me the confidence to get the how to play a MOBA. And then recently, I've been playing Fault for like a year just to get really good at MOBAs again. But I'm still not that good even after all these years. Y'all are good with Rampage. I'll give you that, man. I'll play it. <laughs> I've played with you in Overprime, and you, uh, your confidence level goes from like here to like right here whenever you're playing, playing the old yeah, Rampage. I even, I even tried him as a support a few times in Overprime. He's a good support <laughs> man. You just pick that rock up and mean mug people, and they just back off. <laughs> yeah, that but, video I sent you that one time of uh, me in mid lane with Rampage, and that just that poor Bellica. Just I think it was Bellica. <laughs> I just kept hitting her with a rock, and then it was back when uh. The rocks would fly through the towers, and I end up nailing her at the end with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the news and updates. We're going to start this week with Overprime because they've got a lot of stuff going on. They released a training mode video. This is not a an AI versus AI sort of thing. This is just a straight up training mode where you can go in, fight off minions. They had like a a uh, target dummy that you could ping into. And then they had various jungle camps, some of which we haven't seen before. And um, really cool stuff to see that they're redesign even redesigning even the jungle camps. Uh, Blood, what did you think of the training video? I, I want it now. <laughs> for, a person, for a person like me that still has issues, because I got other mental issues people will know about if they watch my stream. I don't want to get into it here. But uh, I want a training video. I've always, I have been playing Fault because I couldn't play Overprime anymore. So I was like, I need to play a third person MOBA. But I've been playing and it's just Fault. I was like, I, I need some kind of training. I need somewhere I could, because on Overprime, you could just start a 
a match with just minions, learn the heroes, learn this, you don't have anybody to play against, but at least you can learn the hero, not have to worry about people, you know, being toxic, saying why well, you're bad or stuff like that. <laughs> but the training mode of Overprime, I first saw that, I loved it. I was like, I want this. Give it to me now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jelly? I think it's incredible. I think something I've always liked that Smite has, even if I don't play the game very much, is their training practice mode. That you can go in, it's a separate map where you can kind of have access to everything and really test out and flesh out th builds or learn about the character or whatever you want to do. And Overprime, I think, took that kind of to the next level and kind of expanded on that idea. And I think it's fantastic and it's going to help a lot of players pick up the game a little easier without feeling so overwhelmed by all the different concepts. Yeah, it, it's a it's a godsend for content creators too. If you mm -hmm. can display how your build would work in game and not have to like deal with all the other crap, just show straight up this is how much you will crit at this time and yeah, it's 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 an amazing thing that they've done. I, I Paragon never had it. I wish I wish they would have. The other thing with the training video though is the the one sort of insect camp we've seen before we've seen images of that before but then they had some kind of like two-legged iguana tailed monster thing that comes running up that twin blast just wastes and then at the it's very end of the video yeah you got that big dragon thing in the background that you barely get a glimpse it's of i thought it looked like pterodactyl uh, or something pterodactyl is that what they're saying is a like pterodactyl that. i thought it looked like the monster in that movie the ritual <laughs> Yes, actually. It does, <laughs> right? That's a great reference for that. <laughs> I'm going to do a side by side and put it up there. I think it's one of those things of Paragon Jungle Camps were always really generic. Yeah. They were the white modeled minion with maybe some moss and a different weapon, and that was it. And that was super basic. And most games have extremely extreme variations of the jungle camps where they're completely different models, completely different. That way you can distinctly say what camp you're at and all these things. And so it makes sense that they're redoing a lot of these. but And they look incredible too. So, I mean, shout out to their team that's putting those together because they're amazing. Oh, yeah. I yeah, that's, like a, that's a very good point. I never even thought about that. But yeah, Paragon was just the minions. It was just more minions for the jungle camps where everybody else has like manticores and, and it's hard feral to stay. deer. I don't know. From, from like a competitive standpoint, it's hard to be in the jungle and be like, oh, I'm at the minion camp. There's no, great, which one? Uh, the, the minion camp? I don't know which one I'm at, right? Whereas you can give each camp a different name and now you can communicate to your team exactly where on you are on the map without them having to reference the mini map or anything like that. You can say, I'm at the lizard camp. And then they immediately go, oh, okay, I know exactly where that is and can go from there. I mm, wonder why you said lizard camp. Uh, what I don't know, man. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some other game that we cover might have lizard camps. Uh, I mean, maybe, may, maybe just a little. <laughs> I only and speak then, in uh, ethereal references. <laughs> they also released another uh, skin concept. This time it was for Severog. Not a huge major change to his skin, but a cool one nonetheless. As always, they're just their concept team just knocks it out of the park every time. And then mm -hmm. they actually realize those concepts. Like we've seen concepts from other games where it just never comes into fruition. They, they seem to be pretty quick about coming up with these concepts and then actually modeling the 3d models for them. We you talked guys... about it before that if they're really trying to expand their team to like a hundred people, once you get past the core game gameplay working as you want it to, a lot of those people can be the artists and then the modelers for these skins that you can just turn these things out nonstop, essentially, because you have 50, 60 people working on them at all times. More skins, more money. Mm hmm. Absolutely. What do you think about that Sebrog skin, blood? Uh, if it's not red or black, it's usually I, I don't really care. <laughs> Did it have any black? I, I can't remember. I don't have the I picture. I think it was like right gold. Now. White and stuff. Oh, okay. It's not, not your style. Exactly. A little too angelic for you with your demonic yeah. eyes over there. I'm kind of into, you know, just like the name, you know, I have a theme. Like the yellow eyed <laughs> demon from Supernatural over there. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's just a like reference that, day for you, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. I like it. Is that better for you? 
No, put it back <laughs> on. I loved it. There we uh, go. I mean, Severog players though are diehards. Like they're they're the oh, kind of God, people yeah. that if they a new skin comes out, they'd be like, "It's a Severog skin. Gotta buy it." Like that's all it is. It was one of the few groups in Paragon that no matter what the skin was, they were gonna purchase it. Like it was just one of those things. Yeah, he didn't get much skin love in Paragon though. That's for sure. No. <laughs> so much potential for skins too. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got one thing about Severog. Severog and Richter. It doesn't matter how many times I've tried them, or even Muriel. Those three, I just I can't get the concept of how to play them. I mm. constantly die a lot. I feel like I'm completely useless. <laughs> I can't play Muriel for shit. <laughs> then the last thing, uh, the last thing for Overprime was they released a um, gameplay of Rampage. Now <laughs> they're having a problem with their shorts. <laughs> like when they did the training video, there was a but there was a bunch of people saying like the numbers are too big. Is there a way to shrink the numbers? Is there a way to shrink the numbers? You got to realize when you do a short, you you, you record something. 1920 by 1080 you've got to zoom it in when you go 1080 by 1920 right mm -hmm. so it's it's like a very zoomed in view those numbers don't look that big when you're actually playing the game but in response to that i think they posted like this tiny little box of rampage where you can even like full screening you can barely see what's going on with it I, it's cool that they released it. I like seeing some Rampage gameplay. I'm very excited to see Rampage coming back into uh, the Paragon world, but man, they need to they need to tighten it up. Yeah, absolutely. That's each one of their shorts that they put out are in like such variations of quality and for, like performance. It's like I don't know who. I, do you have five different people making shorts at all times? What is happening here that we're getting this weird? They're just tossing Richter hooks out there to see what they catch. <laughs> Till they find something. Yeah, the thing about those uh, shorts, I had never cared about TikTok. I've never cared about shorts. And then Overprime's like released that mocap thing of on TikTok. I was like, I never even heard that song before. Now I just love that song. <laughs> but I was just, I keep watching that. I was like, I like this video. And then I started making it. I was like, hmm, my dog, I got kids into this. Huh, I'm, let me try it. And I was like, damn, this is actually <laughs> easy to make a video. <laughs> You know, then I made like I've made what four overprime videos on there, tagging yep. them, and then I just upload them to YouTube Shorts. Yeah, it's quick and easy yep. to do. You just got to find the right format for it. Like I wish that that like especially that rampage video. I wish they would have not done a YouTube yeah. short. They would have just posted a one minute video so that people could see what was going on with it. I wish they'd make a, like those gifts they have in their servers, the mm -hmm. server with the gallery, the little gifts they have. It's supposed to be like they're all small, it's supposed to be for like your background or. Profile yeah. or something. I wanted them to make one that had Rampage in it. I took all those things because I thought that was what you were supposed to use when that that first event, and I just made them to a video and added music over it. <laughs> but I was like, I wanted a Rampage one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, that's about all I have for Over Prime. Uh, you guys got anything else you want to say? No. It's we're in December officially, so maybe we'll get something from them this month. Like um, it's soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is a win. <laughs> and uh, so that's going to bring us to Ethereal. Now, Ethereal had their community corner, which Jelly knows all about because he hosted the community what? corner with Skeptic. I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the community corner, as we all know, their, their last stress test only went for a couple hours before it broke and it had to be shut down. But they announced that they're having another stress test on the 18th. What I really liked about the community corner, however, was they... Uh, Skifter and you, Jelly, you and Skifter really broke it down exactly what happened with the stress test to break it, what you guys did to try and fix it, and why that fix didn't work. It just gives me a, a warm and fuzzy that you guys were able to identify and correct the problem. Mm -hmm. the, just having, Even if I didn't understand the explanation, just the fact that you could say that to the community and explain what was going on and how you're going to fix it, gives me a lot more confidence in this next stress test. Yeah, I mean, and us too, right? Like, if it'd be much worse if we went into it and found out, like, oh, we have no idea what went wrong, right? Like, that's a way bigger issue. But being yeah. able to identify that and share it with you guys as well, I think just helps everybody, like, recover a little bit from that first stress test. That way we can head into the second one with a little bit more confidence and, and worry-free. 
Blood, did you watch the um, the stream, the community corner? Uh, I didn't watch it live. I yeah. was, I think yeah. I was working or something. But I've seen, I keep watching them all. But I do forget to watch the things on Jelly's channel. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sorry. I try to good. watch when that one time where y'all were only showing them on Mongoose channel, like the Enter the Ether. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, wait. Oh yeah, I forgot they started doing it again where they go to his <laughs> channel too. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing they talked about during the uh, stress test was the hero release order after Grognark. So it's going to be Exiel, an assassin. Did I say that mm -hmm. right, Jelly? No, e but it's okay. E Exiel? Exiel? It's okay, no. Exile, yeah. Exile? No, it's fine. Sexiel? Is it sexual? Well, that, that is definitely yeah, how you pronounce it. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> so it's going to be Exile. Have you seen his picture? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Abman McSix Pack over there. <laughs> uh, zero malware or Acheron. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Seafoam <laughs> Jesus, as you and I call him. Yeah, we call him. Because <laughs> he, yeah. Looks like Jesus with a seafoam armor. Um. So it's not particularly in that order. It's just whichever one's going to be completed. But uh, it'll definitely be Grognark next on the roster. But then it'll be one of those four. So you can go root for those if and you want to. Who is Malware yeah. again? Is he, is he ADC? Yes. Malware is a marksman. Yep. Now, I saw the... What you need to do is make a skin for me that has, like, red lightning over him instead of the purple. Then I'll play him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll have a color variation of of sorts. Oh, dude, Malware's skin. We've already got. It. I don't think I've seen a Malware skin. You haven't? No. <laughs> <laughs> but his skins are incredible. We've got a couple planned already in the pipeline, and they're amazing. So Right on. Yeah, I, I guess I should explain that. So Exiel is an assassin. Um, Zero is a Sky Slayer. He looks mm -hmm. sort of angelic, and he has a spear and a gun. Fucking nine mil and a spear. <laughs> and um, then Malware is the ranger, as we just discussed. He's got a bow and arrow, but he's, like, cybernetic and shit. And then Acheron is a uh, knight class, so he's supposed to be sort of either tanky or bruisery. He's the same class as Talos. Mm -hmm. I like how yeah, Talos they're... has a giant freaking axe and Acheron has a giant freaking sword. That's going to be the, yeah. the, the <laughs> knight thing. Giant now all knights weapons. from now on have to have a giant something. What well, Yara was supposed to be a no, no, Yara was gonna be a berserker. berserker. That's right. Yep. Um, no, but each of them, they're the first seven, of course, were safely designed in that we wanted people to be able to play them, pick them up easily, go from there. Basically, starting with this next set of myths, as we've already kind of seen with Grognark, they're gonna start getting wilder and wilder in ideas and like really bring new aspects to the game overall. And new aspects to the 3D MOBA genre as a whole. Yeah, Grognark having sort of travel mode, but it's not exactly <laughs> travel mode because he's slower whenever he's moving regularly and then he rolls into mm -hmm. a ball and rolls around the map whenever he needs to go quicker. Is that the one that I saw a while back that rolls? Yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll be able to roll. roll. Yeah. Also, the one I just saw on the recent one, but they have a gun and a sword, mm -hmm. I guess. I was like, that's like... Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's going to close it out for Ethereal, unless you guys had anything else you wanted to add? I think that's everything. I have one stress last Stress test on the 18th. That I'm looking for the next stress test. But I am just so glad that I got into the... I was there at the first hour. I was like... Now, I would have probably been in the first match if I had known that you're supposed to pick your role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I pissed off people because of, all I wanted to do was get in there and try out the flying here. I've tried Leah. <laughs> I was just flying around. I was like, I don't know where the hell I was supposed to go, what role I was supposed yeah. to play. I just wanted to fly. I was like, and we end up winning that one anyway. So I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there should be no shame in that. If you just want to go in, check out the map, and fly around for your first couple matches, I mean, don't don't worry about what everybody else, if everybody else is trying to sweat yeah. hard and win. Don't worry about Skifter. <laughs> I actually thought flying was going to be like a, a skill on like a cooldown. I was like, you mean you can just jump and press shift and fly anytime you want? Basically. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty great stuff. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about Ethereal, Jelly and I do host uh, Enter the Ether, which either goes on my channel or his channel on Tuesdays. So uh, you can check that out. And it is also a podcast. I'll have those 
the links for the podcast download. That's kind of what we would prefer that you do is listen to the podcast, but you know, whatever, how you want to, however you want to consume the content. Yeah. Let's move on now to fault. Um, fault. They had a vote for, they had six items and they had a vote for which one the community wanted to explain to them, sort of revealed to them. And, um, the thorn shield one, but they also released the sort of souls, the, the thorn shield being a, um, it just thorns. It's basically, it's in pretty much every MOBA. It's just damage reflect whenever you take physical damage or is it, uh, whenever you receive a basic attack, you're, you, you reflect 12% of your physical armor as energy damage. So a lot of weird sorts of damages <laughs> and armors and values going on there, but it's basically, it works as a damage reflect, just like every other MOBA fault definitely needed this. I've been missing this mm -hmm. from my life. The crazy thing about this item, though, is it also has the secondary effect of reducing any crits you take by 20%. Oh, right, yeah. And honestly, with both of those effects, I do not see a reason that if you're a tank, you're not taking this item every single game. Because you've got the damage reflect, and marksmen's are such a huge thing in fault, right? If one gets steamrolling, it's really hard to stop them, and almost all of them build crit consistently. So between the two effects, you're mitigating damage and reflecting 12%. It's huge. That item is going to be absolutely game changing for tanks. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Blood? I was I was sitting here trying to find the item so I could look at them again. <laughs> but uh, I know I saw one that was uh, I was like, I want to use this on a jungler. Yeah, pro the, probably the thorn shield. Yeah. Because I was like, this sounds interesting, but every time I see the skills, it's like. I don't get the concept. I still don't get the concept of fault. It's like, I I think I'm doing it right or building right. And it's like, why do I feel so like I'm like, die super easy? It's yeah, like, I've yeah. never, like, I I used to be good at Greystone. And I was like, and now I'm like, I can't, every time I try to play him or offland, like, I die immediately. But other people play him, it's like, you can never kill him. <laughs> uh, great. A lot of the, I think this item in particular is going to be great for Greystone and he's in a bad spot right now. He really is like he gets dominated by pretty much anybody else in the off lane. If they know how to play anywhere half decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Greystone like, is your safe pick. And even then he's not very safe. Whereas this will really set him apart and give him some opportunity to survive in that lane. It just makes him even more of an ADC hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, you already don't want to kill him off as it is. Now you're going to be even more wary of shooting at him. So yeah, I think it'll be a really good item for Greystone in particular. He's he's I've seen him played in the jungle a lot, and he's actually quite good in the jungle. I did try that once, Greystone in the jungle. Yeah. I I don't know. I think I'm just <laughs> missing a small little detail of how to play these characters <laughs> this way. Because I know that like D Trigger, I hate playing against D Trigger because every time he'll have like oh, three he'll have three Phantom Blades before I even have one card. I'm like, <laughs> how? And it's like only been 15 minutes. I'm like, what are you doing? That's because D Trigger is constantly in the uh, in your jungle, not his own jungle. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, that's the that's the shit thing about Fault is I know everybody's name that plays. Like mm -hmm. I know because the player base is so small right now. Like you said, D Trigger. I should have no idea who D Trigger is. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that Kalari player that always invades the uh, enemy team's yep. jungle. The good thing I have. Three different names. <laughs> I only play on one name. People are okay. People know me on two names now. <laughs> uh, the other item that they revealed was the Sword of Souls, uh, fifty-five physical power, fifteen physical pins, stacking item that maxes out at seventy-five stacks. Each stacks gives uh, 0.6 power. Full stacks gives you ten percent physical power. Uh, and the way you get the stacks is by killing minions. You get one stack. Uh, if you kill heroes, you get five stacks. Some some crap like that. This seems strong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Usually with these stacking items, you either see them stack over time, or if they're going to stack on kills and minions, you see them fall off when you die in some capacity. But just having an item that just is almost inherently better than every other item once it's fully stacked is dangerous because that means that anyone that wants damage... They're just like, okay, I build this, I wait until I accrue my stacks, and then I just hit a power level that nobody could match. Yeah, it's I, I can see people building this pretty early, too. I can see people going mm -hmm. like Gravedigger's Crossbow, 
boots and then into this. And then every item they pick up after that that has any kind of physical power is just an extra boost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of the... Uh, what is the fault item that scales with... You get extra magic power when or ability damage. I can't think of what the name is now. Oh, yeah. I can't either. Um, But it's basically that for attack damage instead of or for physical power instead of the ability power right and so yeah. it's I, it's a dangerous item to put in with a marksman meta that's already demolishing games half the time <laughs> yeah it's nuts it is nuts oh and then um finally they had a not finally and this is the next to last they had a demo of how to access the ai mode which kind of gave us a better idea of what their ai mode was going to be and also gave us a pretty good look at their uh at their map it's not just a facelift on their map it does look like they actually redesigned some of the elements of the jungle especially and um yeah it looked really good and um, uh, uh, looks really well thought out um you're gonna have to play ai matches until you're level five you can't just jump in you see people do that all the time in fault they jump in with zero idea how to buy items they just go booking it down mid lane run under a tower and die and you're like, oh, crap, I got this guy. And then, you know, you, tr you try and guide them and, te and teach them, but sometimes they don't even respond. But forcing them to actually play AI games, and I'm sure there'll be some sort of tutorial associated with that. I'm, I'm hoping so. Um, yeah, I think that's just going to be great for Fault overall. That was actually the first thing I was going to say, Mangoose, is hopefully now that we have AI matches, a tutorial can come because they'll those go hand in hand. Yeah. So theoretically, we should be receiving a tutorial at the same time, more than just those videos they force you to watch when you first load in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what patch 14 brings. I forgot they had those videos, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> because I remember the, when they first implemented them, having to sit through and watch them. And I was like, please just let me skip. I've played 50 games already. Please, God. <laughs> Blood, what did you think? I don't know. Somebody that's still kind of new, can't figure things out. I, I'm i going to play uh, AI mode until I feel confident. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go to PvP and just start crying and then come back to AI mode. <laughs> <laughs> that's, It'll at I mean, least it... give you an idea of how much mana your abilities are going to cost and like how much, how much of the tower damage you can take so you know when to dive and when not to dive and that sort of thing. I don't know if it's just fault or if it's other ones. It might have been other. I always have this weird thing where I think people can see things sooner than I can see them. I thought it was my delay settings. I was, always feel like I have to have superhuman reaction speed or something. Oh, that's because we're I'm old as old. fuck. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I keep thinking. I get the I same have... thing. That's why I can't play BRs. People see me and I'm like, where the fuck was that guy? It's because we're old as fuck. That's why. Oh. And this is actually the first year I've learned. I used to always be a console and controller player, you know. And then uh, that's the one good thing about Fall, I guess. It helped me uh, learn to play mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. Then I went and bought a hundred dollar mouse and all this, and just it still doesn't make me that much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's about all I had to say about the AI mode. Unless you guys had anything. No. No, I think it's a great step for them, for sure. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Now we'll come with patch 14, which is supposed to be the 10th of December. Mm -hmm. A lot of going to be a lot of stuff going down in December, boys. Uh-huh, absolutely. <laughs> Strap in and get ready. <laughs> and then the last thing that we had for Fault, they are, they're having a contest. Um, take a picture of your setup, like the, what, what you play Fault on, with Fault up on your screen, and post it on Twitter. It reminds me a lot of how Overprime's kind of doing their marketing. I think if if they did pick up this up from Mobile Prime, no harm, no foul. Good on them for 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 picking up a good idea because it's a great idea. Uh, my only sort of problem with this is I brought this up to uh, to Bearded and Windu. It kind of seems hopefully they're they'll reward creativity in some way. Otherwise, it's just a a contest of who has the most expendable income to drop on mm -hmm. their fucking monitors and set up. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I'm a gear nut, right? And so I have a lot of gear on my desk for various things. The stream deck, all, all my lights, my camera, the whole nine yards. How does that not just give me an edge over somebody else? Yeah. Like, that, it just, 
it's kind of a strange way to do it. Yeah, what? I had just redone my setup. I had just uh, moved to a different room because the other room was too small. And now this room's a bigger. I redid my monitors. I have one that's a portrait mode now. I got them all next to here. I got, I've got all kinds of stuff here. I don't have it all fancy looking because I built my own desk. So, but I'm still. I keep forgetting to do that. I'm gonna actually make a video for that probably. <laughs> Y'all got two monitors sitting on a fucking plastic table I bought at Walmart right now. Brilliant. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Submit it, man. Goose. I guarantee you'll win. I mean, they I'll, did, they I'll go didn't in there. Necessarily say though that the best looking one is going to win. They never said what the what the criteria for winning was. So maybe it'll just be random. Maybe they'll just pick them at random. I don't know. In that case, then definitely submit Mangus. <laughs> we got to get your Walmart table up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With his burn marks and shit. <laughs> and that's all I had for fault. Unless you guys had anything else. Nope. All right. Nope. Let's move on to predecessor. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Uh, I was going to say one less. I don't know if I had said it. If y'all talked to I just like, uh, I was one of the big haters for Fault, and I was just, I was always trashing on it all the time. I was like calling it cast grab, all that stuff before. But I've actually, it's gotten better on 13. It got better on 13. It made me come back to play it, even though I took a break. For it. So I'm hoping 14 is going to be really good. Because mm -hmm. I want FaZe. I don't care who the hell has FaZe. And now two <laughs> people are going to bring out FaZe, and it's like, cool. But I think that, uh... They seem to have gotten better when they actually realized a lot of the community is like, uh, you need to fix your shit. <laughs> yeah. After that mm -hmm. thing with Bearded, and we were just talking, y'all were talking about it for so long, I was like, and then it's like the day after, it's like, hey, here's an update. I was like, good. Keep, going, <laughs> keep up with the good work. Get this thing going. We need lots of competition. Mm -hmm. I try to pre preach that all the time, too. Like, Fault is way different than what you probably are hearing. Like, people shit on fault constantly but they're talking about fault when it first released they're not talking about fault in its current state and it's way better than it used to be uh well let's move on to predecessor where i have absolutely nothing once again for predecessor <laughs> i it's hard for me to get mad at them though because of the quality of the content that they have released i mean that that last stress test didn't go so great for them but Predecessor has just felt absolutely amazing, has looked great, and just, it has won the hearts of the community, but uh, they don't put shit out anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're, they went from transparent to opaque. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And that's, I mean, we're approaching six months uh, since we've really heard anything meaningful. Excel yes, bite. Come on, Jelly. Uh, yeah, great. And Grux. Yeah. <laughs> like... It's one of those things of like, uh, it's been six months since your last failed stress test and we haven't heard anything. Like, it just feels off. Like, it feels like there's something more going on. And we've said that before, too. But it's just it's just a feeling. I don't know. <laughs> what you got, blood? Maybe they're waiting for patch 14 and it'll be a big announcement that they join together. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> that that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wouldn't that be the nuts, though, if uh, they waited until everybody else was releasing and was like, oh, yeah, we, uh, us, us too. Uh, we're us here, too. too. <laughs> really, it's going to be a, nut, a crazy December. All four games have some big Now, some choose, big, big, everyone. Choose. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to close it out for Predecessor, I guess. Hopefully, we'll get something out of them fairly soon. We'll move on to the popularity poll. Uh, 530 votes. When I actually calculated everything, there's probably more now, but uh, we have Predecessor at 52%, Fault at 13%, Ethereal at 14%, and Overprime at 21%. Clear evidence that this is conducted on my channel. I just did a big, pretty big fluff piece for Overprime, <laughs> so of course uh, the Overprime numbers went up quite a bit. But also, Overprime's just been banging out updates left and right, so... People are starting to realize that the game is going to come out fairly soon, so I think that has also contributed a little bit to the overprime hype. Yeah, absolutely. It's seeing the huge increase in overprime. I 100% guarantee is tied to your video you made on them last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think all the numbers make sense. Honestly, we're seeing more come out of overprime, so it makes sense that people are gearing up and, and getting more excited about them. Fault. Everyone's waiting for patch 14. 
spread everyone's waiting for, so it makes sense that their numbers are going down. Ethereal, it made sense. I mean, like it, given the other things that are going on in the space, that can't, it can't always funnel into Ethereal as right. much as I would love it to, right? But it's <laughs> it's just one of those things. So I don't. I think it makes sense all the numbers, and just be interesting to see in the future where these go. Blood, anything to add about the popularity poll? Uh I posted it everywhere to get people to come vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was also Blood's doing. That Overprime got those numbers. Yeah. Just like just like most of your videos about Overprime, I'll go into their Discord and post <laughs> your video for you in case you didn't do it. <laughs> I usually don't. I usually don't. Um, I don't know, man. It's weird how the numbers sort of fluctuate. It seems like Pred's numbers kind of gra have been gradually declining, but it's mainly been shifts between the other three. Pred mm -hmm. stays fairly steady. With their with with their numbers, but they are etching closer to actually dipping below fifty percent. Um, if they don't put out any updates soon with all these other games coming out, I'm I'm sure that that will drop. Um, I really think I really think that um the over prime they're gonna they're gonna pull their player base from outside the Paragon refugees, but I think most of the at least North American para refugees are going to end up going for pred or fault and most likely at this point they would probably go for pred but i think Overprime will still succeed because they have a greater opportunity to pull in different players because they are very different from paragon and they don't look quite like the same game like if you were to look on steam and see pred fault and Overprime, Overprime looks different pred and fault look about the same yep 100 percent. i think it could be good for the Paragon successors as a whole, because now you don't have the monolith and legacy lovers playing the same game. You can have them be separated and still have their own ecosystems to survive in. Right. And then and kind of the weird thing too is like a lot of people are kind of attracted to Overprime because it has that legacy look to it, but it has a very like super <laughs> monolith feel. So like, it depends. Did, did you like the looks of legacy or did you like the play style of legacy? I like the overprime. I mean the I mean the <laughs> the prime boss, not over. Orb prime. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Orb prime, where they made it to where, in that one video we saw, where it's more way more open, to where you really have to risk it to take that thing because you can get attacked from every single angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, it I mean, makes it more interesting. That's the exact so, um, prime boss pit that uh, Par uh, yeah, Paragon Legacy Paragon had really. Right down Seems to the like shadow they, wells overlooking it. Yeah. Seems like they combined like legacy map and monolith map and just kind of made something out of both. Yeah. That's pretty Which cool. Which is stuff. interesting that they they started with a legacy base and updated to the monolith aspects of it. Their predecessor started with a monolith base and updated the legacy <laughs> aspects of it. Like <laughs> they're complete opposites in that regard. And then false like we got pine trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all yes, ever play exactly. the 3v3 yes did you that play was that, actually Joey? interesting I yeah did. it was it was like back in january or something they or december when they made that that was cool and it was just 3v3 one map lane for it mm -hmm. it the wasn't like they, they just took have... a lane out of their game they created that from the ground up yeah the only thing they didn't have was they didn't have random picks they had it to where you couldn't back until you died but they didn't have random picks, so everybody would just pick the same hero all the time. And just, Howitzer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would just get irritating. <laughs> yeah, and they still didn't have Shimbi's sound effects fixed by then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good God. I love me some Shimbi, and they did really well with her kit. Like, she played exactly like she used to, but you would throw a wolf and it would go, <laughs> and you're like, what was that? You do circle rhythm, and she'd be like, "Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bong, 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 bong." I was like, "Jesus Christ!" I love it. Perfect sound effects. Let me let me get sound grabs of all those, putting them in the game, guaranteed. <laughs> oh, by the way, I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, I was talking in the Overprime Discord today. They were talking about how there used to be a bug where, um, some of the characters' voices would change. Like he was saying that, uh. He was playing Narbash, but Narbash had Sparrow's voice lines. 
What? <laughs> Would it not be awesome to have the Fae with uh, Rampage's voice lines? <laughs> <laughs> Like, every time you throw harvest, I was like, Yah! there you go. Yah! I love it. Perfect. Put it in. I want that's what I want yep. in the game. Monetize that. Give me rampage voice lines <laughs> on the Fae. Oh. Her actual voice lines sound evil, which her lore, she was kind of evil. Like, you would think out of oh. her and Morgash that Morty would be the evil one. No, it was the Fae. <laughs> uh, so. Let's uh let's move on from the popularity poll, get into the discussion topic. We'll talk about the pros and cons of ELO. We've talked about this before, and it's kind of easy to shit on ELO mm -hmm. as being a problem, because it has been a problem for Fault in the past. But there's good things that come with it, too. Like, it actually has, in parts, a, a bit of player retention. It gives you something to work forward to. And, you know... All these games are going to need something like that. Like, Fault's going to have their mastery system. That's going to be, I think, a better thing to, to keep people involved in the game than just trying to climb ELO. But, um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I will say that during one of the predecessor stress tests or um, alpha tests, like, I took an hour to play Fault because I was very close to having enough matter to get a Decker skin or some shit. And, like, I just wanted that Decker skin and... So I played Fault for about an hour while I could have been playing Predecessor, even though I kind of prefer Predecessor, but there was nothing to play towards mm -hmm. in Pred. So I think ELO gives you something to play towards. I just don't think it's healthy overall for a growing game. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think adding it early is most often going to be detrimental. Specifically adding it in a public viewable sense. Oh, God, yeah. Right? Because... Elo is really good in terms of a matchmaking system because if Mangus and I are both at 500 Elo, but Blood is at 10,000, it shouldn't be matching up the 500 Elo players with the 10,000 Elo player in, in the majority of, of cases, right? So having that system there so you can have those matchmaking differences, huge. Having it available for players to go out and be like, I got 21 Elo that game. I lost 35 Elo that game is just going to breed toxicity like oh. nothing else. Like, it's a ranked system without having ranked. God, it's it a, has. And it's it's bad. It's a, it's a huge problem in that regard. I think you're right on the money, Mangoose, of saying that it's a good player retention model, but having it as your only player retention model <laughs> is a problem. <laughs> what do you think, Blood? Uh, I've I tried to voice this before, but I got shut down, I think, one time in the sort. But uh, I'm new to it, so I'm like, I figured, hey, it's an early access. It's not really a ranked mode, so why not just, why not have it on their site to where, oh, you win a match, you just gain this mat amount. You lose a match, you lose this amount, and it's the same amount. So, because people like me go in there and play it, and I get, I only get toxic when I'm like, I'm trying to do good in a match, and then we lose that match because of some AFK player. Or, you know, somebody trying to cheat something, do whatever. If something happens where that player is not doing anything, or they give up early because they're like, oh, well, we, I don't know what you're doing, so I'm just going to AFK now. And then you look, and you lost, like, 50 points. You're like, what? We could have won that game, but this guy... It's, yeah. It makes no... And then I'm like, oh, cool, I won. And I, I can actually do it... So I've actually won 10 in a row and then I lose two matches and I'm back down to the exact same ELO I was at, you know, 12 matches ago. It just, it always frustrated me. It always made me kind of not want to keep playing, especially the time of night I play. There's not that many people on. It's mostly really good players. <laughs> and it, I don't know. It's just that kind of thing that kind of irritates me where it's, they, since there's never, never, well, sometimes it's a used to be above 200, but come on, just don't use a traditional ELO system with so few players. It's just going to make people want to quit. <laughs> or, or just don't make it publicly available or something like mm -hmm. that. Like I, I've talked about this several times on my channel, but like when Fault was in testing, they ha they had ELO, like public, public ELO among testers. So testers were competing against each other for ELO instead of testing the game which is mm -hmm. one of the reasons Fault came out with so many bugs. 
It's because everybody's trying to be as competitive as possible. Nobody's just dicking around in the jungle, see if they can get stuck on a rock, you know what I mean? So then when the game came out, people get stuck on rocks, you know, get stuck on fog walls, get stuck on this and that. So the the ELO at that point, definitely 100% uncalled for. Um, I think a better system is like the mastery system. If you could do a mastery system like that from the start, where your like, wins gain you something without showing your ELO, you still mm-hmm. get to progress. You still get to like show people, yeah, I'm, I've got this many points and I've got whatever. And the good players will still get more points than the than the bad players because the bad players will still be losing. But you don't have that elo and then that sort of haughty, oh, you're fucking silver. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm plat. Well, I'm master. Like, and even early Paragon had that problem too. Agora.gg was available from essentially minute one of Paragon's existence. Yeah. And yeah. it did the same thing to the community. Is the second you got into game, people looked up your name and went, "Oh, this guy's in silver. I don't want to be in this game. Get me out." And that, and just from minute one, it was bad. And then that, so that silver guy can never climb out a silver elo because people are just fucking dumping him. Mm-hmm. So something, and we've been talking about them several times recently, but Halo Infinite's rank system is you can only ever go up, you never go down. So if you lose a game, you don't lose elo. When you win, you gain. Statistically, that is going to put you slightly higher in terms of skill level. They, because it's there's no actual fluctuation necessarily. It's just that on wins, you go up. So it'll put you slightly higher than your actual skill level. But it also gives you the opportunity to grow as a player by pushing you just that little bit. By putting matching you with people that are just slightly higher than your skill level consistently. And that's across the board. So... That system, I think, is also way better because there's no feeling of defeat when you lose. It's just a reward when you win, right? It's not, I. it doesn't take me four games to climb out of the one loss that I had. Right. Right. And so it's, it feels better despite being a very similar system at the same time. I don't know. Have y'all actually seen, did y'all actually play in the Overprime demo last year? I, before I got into the whole ELO thing and learned, you know, into the fault ELO, they actually had kind of a thing, but all their, like, so-called ELO stuff, matchmaking, statistics, rank, they had a rank system. It was all in-game. You could just scroll over to a tab and you'd see it. I don't know how they did theirs, but I always kind of liked it. I didn't have a place where I'd see, like, oh, I lost this much. I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. I would actually keep playing because... And then they even had, they had so many things that would help you learn, like, you could go to, like, the tree, the breakdown tree. You could see every single skill that any every player used, what they activated, anything they upgraded, and what time they did it at. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is extremely helpful for me that I need to know, I'm always like a time person, I have to have, this has to be here, and this has to be done at this time, and then I need to do this. I like if I don't get the sequence in my head correctly, you'll see me just stumbling around like, uh, where am I supposed to go again? And then all of a sudden I die and I get behind and I'm like, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I just really liked their in overprime. It just back then it was the only game I could play because I think Vault was just about to come out. It was still not released in EA yet, but it, I just liked how they had in-game chat when you're waiting. They had lobby chat where you're just with your buddy or a team, you can still chat with it. It had an all chat also. So anybody that actually online on the game, they would actually have it where you could chat with people. So I don't know. They had all these features. It was like, and that was over a year ago. I can't wait to see what they have now. I just hope Bolt adds something like that where you can just chat with your teammates. Because sometimes I'll join people that watch my stream. But if I'm streaming, I don't want to be in voice chat. But I still want to be able to talk to them. So it'd be nice if I could have like, while we're waiting for a match, a nice place to chat with them. <laughs> but I kind of got off the ELO thing, but. <laughs> well, I mean, you were talking about ELO there at the beginning, which I didn't know they had, which I, again, I don't think they should have had that back then. I don't think they should have had any kind of ELO display. It does sound helpful that you can look at the top players and see what their builds were and when they unlock stuff. And it was per match. It's like the recent match. It was like in the recent match thing, you would just see exactly what you build, what all your teammates build, and what the enemy build. Mm-hmm. 
and when they did it, even if they used... I think it showed... Yeah. I don't think it showed when they used a skill or anything, but it actually showed when they bought a card, yeah. when they did what, stuff like that. That's a neat system. I think something I've seen from League recently that they're it's still in testing, they haven't officially released it, is that there's actually going to be a setting to opt out of that third-party data where, or like, like that people can search your ELO, that people can search your rank, that people can search your match history, all these things. And I think that is a setting all of these games need to consider. Yeah. And I think it should be on by default and opt in to sharing that data with these third-party websites because then your players feel better because they don't feel like someone's constantly going to like search them up and then just flame them for having a bad game last game or whatever it may be. But I think that's a brilliant way to do it that more companies and games need to consider a system like that where you can hide your statistics. The, the issue with that becomes a, if you are hiding your statistics, what are you hiding? So your teammates could be like, why, why aren't you showing your statistics? Come on, what, what's going on? What rank are you? What's, what's this? And so it is a double-edged sword. It's just finding the balance of how to do both things without causing other problems. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds... Yeah, I really like that idea. Mm-hmm. Sounds like there's a lot of options out there for these people, for these companies to go with. I just... I hope they pick one up. <laughs> I, I feel like the majority of them should just avoid public ELO for quite some time. Yeah. When when they first release, public ELO is just going to be detrimental. Well, Fault is the prime example of this, right? That it became, that's all it became about. You need to have, when you first release, have some other system to keep player retention up. <laughs> Do not use public ELO. Please, God. Yeah. All right. That's about all I had to say about ELO. Do you guys have anything else? Um, that's it. I think, I think we put our heads together and came up across other games and with our own ideas. I think we came up with some pretty good ideas tonight and kind of, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> Thanks, Pangoos. Well, that's going to close it out for the topic of discussion. Let's move on to plugs. Blood Hunter, what do you got to plug? Everything. I've got my Twitch, which is the same name, F Blood Hunter. I've got, I've recently got on TikTok. You know, it was weird. After like a two days, I had like 150 views on one. I was like, <laughs> cool. TikTok's the same name. The only thing that's different is uh, my Twitter's I Blood, Blood Hunter. And then my YouTube is my normal name, Foolish Blood Hunter. So that's about it. I got all your stuff except your Twitter. If you could send that to me afterwards. Your app I don't whatever. Know, I'm, Twitter got too toxic for me. I'm still on there, but just. I don't Just use no. it that much. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Jelly, what you got the plug? Just my Twitch. You know, Marvelous Monday every Monday at 8 Mountain Time. Um, and I think that's it. What about you, Mangoose? Marvelous Mondays. Be there or don't be there. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but it's fun. <laughs> so I would say show up. But I was going to show up uh, last this past Monday, but I think I was... It's like every time I see him on, it's like I'm... I'm already watching two other people at the same time. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I need to add in a third one. And I'm like, I don't know. Should I just lurk? I That's don't what know. We need all the monitors for. So we need all the monitors. Exactly. For. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, that is going to close it up for this week. Uh, thank you for joining us again. If you want to be part of the show, just hit me up. Uh, I'll put you on the list. We already got, I think we're scheduled out for about six, seven weeks now, but I'll, I'll fit you in when I can. And um, look at us getting popular. <laughs> well, Jelly, I, I keep meaning to ask if you have anybody, just let me know. Yeah, anybody that's I'm me. I'm here every week. You. I I've put already, myself at the I've front already list. got you every week. <laughs> Twice a week. It's already too much. <laughs> I know. I know it is. <laughs> but hey, uh, yep, yep. I got you. An, I got you an idea for, uh, you know, closing out music if you want to hear it. <laughs> uh, is it copyrighted? I don't know. It's just, it's just a, a music box. You're scaring me here, because I'm thinking you're about to play something copyrighted. It's not copyrighted. All right, like go for it. Like and subscribe to Mangoose. Hey. I don't know if you can hear it. I can't we hear cannot. shit. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. I guess I'll have to. <laughs> well, that'll close it out for this week, folks. Thanks. 
for coming and hanging out. If you're watching the premiere, then uh, we'll see you around. If you're watching it in the video, then thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I know Jelly already said it, but I'm going to plug myself because I can do that, Jelly. <laughs> we appreciate I'm you bad. coming out. We'll see you guys next time. Mangoose! Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, and Ferret.